Nellie. Um, I have both worked at Renaissance festivals and been a theater costumer for longer than I want to admit. Um, like 50 years. Um, anyway, the reason I wanted to go ahead and do the shimmy workshop is because everything you do should have a shimmy under it. Everything. Absolutely everything. And it's the only way you can deal with, say, Renfest in the summertime when it's hot and gross. Um, you should never see a pair of stays or bodies or corset without a shimmy underneath because then you have to wash them and washing them is a pain in the butt. Um, <laughs> I work in theater. I, I do have to wash them, but you know, the, the basic shimmy and this, this basic style of shimmy is historically accurate back as far as we have any kind of evidence that such a thing existed. Uh, it's super simple. It's four pieces. It's rectangles. Um, and it's something that, that is just a basic part of your wardrobe. I actually kind of like wearing them like all the time. Um, I have, I got the absolute luck of having a bolt of linen gauze gifted to me. And so I've had linen shimmies for a very long time. So this one that I'm going to make here is handmade. Um, you can, of course, run them up on the sewing machine. And because it's the bottom layer, no one's ever going to see it. Um, you could probably make one of these in a matter of about 20 minutes on a sewing machine. Um, I sit around. Yeah. We have a question. Um, is there such thing as a sleeveless chemise? Um, yes. Um, they would, it would still have straps. Um, your basic petticoat, um, it would have to be built a little differently than these ones because the sleeves are integral to the um, way the neckline fits in this particular style. Um, I may have to incarcerate the dog. <laughs> in any case, so I was going to start this by showing you um, your basic, simple hand sewing stitches. Um, first thing, what is the first thing you do when you sew? You thread the damn needle. Okay, and I do this a little differently. As I was explaining earlier, um, I do this a little differently because well, at first my grandmother taught me how to do this and she taught me the, the same way that everybody would do it. You know, put it through, not on the end, whole business. Now, I took a class in millinery when I was in college and this is how milliners do it. So I've got a length of thread. I just doubled it up so that there's a loop at one end and the two loose ends at the other end. I'm going to take that, where is the needle that doesn't have any thread in it, and I'm actually going to put the loop of the thread through the eye of the needle. Nelly, we can't, we, can you what? move a little bit to your left? We can't see what you're, yeah, sure. there you Well, sure. farther to the left. There you go. Now we see you. All right. So it's easy. I just shoved the loop of the thread through the eye of the needle. So I have a double thread through the needle. Um, the advantage of this is one, you're, you're always sewing with a double thread. And two, there's a loop at the end of this. So when you take your first stitch, let's see, where is the purple one? Here's the purple one. Find the, find the corner of this that isn't sewn yet. Okay, so. When you take your first stitch, you pick up a little bit here and then. Uh, Nally, Nally, can you hold yeah. it up just a little? And to your okay. left. There you go. Okay, 
anyway, I'm trying to, I'm trying to show it to y'all from my point of view, I can see it. Um, but you see how the loop is here and then you're gonna put your needle back through the loop, which means that when your thread starts, there's no knot. You won't pull your thread through, but there's no taggy end sticking out either. Can you show us one more time? I think we missed part of that one. All right. Well, easier said than done, but okay. Need Oh, just the sewing part. I think we got the threading oh. part. Well, on the other hand, this one is now knotted onto the fabric, so I'm gonna have to thread another one. Oh, sorry to interrupt your flow. Oh, no worries. Um, my grandmother told me never to do that, by the way. If anybody, if you just noticed, I just bit my thread. I do do it fairly often. So thread doubled over so that you have a loop. Let's see, loop, there we go. And you're gonna put the loop through the needle which because it's slightly stiffer is actually pretty easy to do. Then you're gonna pull that loop so that the loop end is longer than the end end. And let's see, maybe if I go like this. Is that better? Yes. Okay, so you've got, you can take- you're gonna Hold it up take, a little higher, a little higher. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You're gonna take your stitch and then you're going to run your needle back through the loop, which means that you end up with the thread anchored and no knot. So no, no loose end to tie in, to cut off, to worry about coming untied. Okay, basic. Basic sewing stitch, you probably all know. Your basic in and out, call it a running stitch. I tend to load up five or six of them on a needle at a time. And you've got your basic running stitch. Zoom along. Very good for basting, gathering, um, anything that you want done fast and don't particularly need to be uh, tight or waterproof or anything. The next one I'm going to show you is what I call a halfback running stitch. Is when you when you do your running stitch, like five stitches of running stitch, and then when you go to take the next stitch, you actually back up and pick up and make a little loop so that there's just a little bit of give in the in the stitch. So you get just a smidgen of stretch. And then, let me pull my thread through a little bit. And then there is your basic back stitch, which is if you want a solid line of stitching, you're gonna have to go around in what I call loop-de-loops. So you go back a half a stitch every time you take a stitch. And this will give you a solid line of stitching. It'll look, if you do it straight, which I seldom do. Um, so you're kind of cutting the previous stitch in half? Um, well, the, the stitch on the back goes from, from here to here. So you're doing, half a stitch backwards and a full stitch forward for each stitch. The, the advantage to this is it's got a little bit of this stretch to it. You've got a little bit of give so you won't break threads if you go, if you put some tension on it. For instance, if I were gonna make a, a corset or a set of stays, I would do it all in back stitch just because it's a little stronger. Awesome. If you could hold it up a little higher for us. Sure. And closer to the window. Okay. Closer to the window. There you go. Yeah. So um, for most, almost all of this, this particular um, chemise, 
Um, all I use is your basic running stitch or a running half back. Um, so it's just your basic in out, in it out. And I do about eight to 10 stitches per inch. Um, and because you can load them up like that, it's a lot faster. So given that much, and I'll show you how to do um, the flat felt seams and the um, French seams in just a minute here. But I'm going to go to the basic um, flat fabric. Basically, the pieces of fabric that we um, need to cut for the chamois. You're going to want to start with your measurements. Um, basically, find the widest part of your body and use that measurement for. Um, for how big you want the chamois to be. You want it to be about 10% bigger than the widest measurement. We have a question of what's the best fabric to use? Um, you know, I like to use really lightweight fabric and preferably cotton or linen. Um, you can use just about anything. I wouldn't recommend anything in the, in the polyester synthetic family because it just, it doesn't breathe. And the whole point of having a chamois is to have a layer between you and anything else you might be wearing. Okay, can we have our, our, our diagram up? So I have some material here. I personally have happened to have have founded a thrift store. Um, all these scarves, there's like they're all of them. They're they're 28 inches wide. They are, I don't know, probably 30, probably 60 inches long. And these have the huge advantage in that the edges are already sewn, which means that everything, nothing's gonna fray. But they are um, a very thin cotton gauze. So I'm just going to take this. This one is is a whole scarf um, that I haven't that I haven't uh, cut it all yet. So it's two of that square on the. It's my left. Um, so. You're going to take your widest body measurement, you're going to cut it in half, or you half it. My, my widest body measurement, for instance, is 44 inches, and that's around my hips. And so you're going to take that measurement and cut it in half, so that's 22 inches, and then add 10%. Um, and Exact numbers do not matter in the slightest. The fabric that I use is 28 inches wide, which is considerably more than 10% more than that. Um, so are you using the measurement across, the short measurement across the top? Yeah, that, that is your, the, 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 short measure, the short side of your rectangle, that is gonna be the, um, the width around your body. It's going to be twice the width around your body. No, it's right. going to be twice of it is going to be one width around your body, plus ten percent. Okay, I know that sounds like math, but really it isn't. Um, and I've cut the body, and then I'm cutting the sleeves. Um, the sleeve length is absolutely whatever you want it to be. Um, this particular one that I'm working on right now is uh, sort of a small cap, puff cap sleeve, like would go under a Regency gown or would actually be the shape of a Regency gown. And what I do, oh, cool. <laughs> Trying to follow along with you here. <laughs> yeah, you, you're doing great. Thank you. So what I do is I stack all four of those pieces up on top of each other and then fold them in half so that you have a raw edge at the top and all four pieces of fabric 
folded together so that all of the, the top armpit corner is all one corner. If that makes any sense at all. So is that the, all the 28 inches are together? Is that what you're saying? Yep. All of the 28 inches, it should be four pieces. And you're gonna stack those all on top of each other and then fold the whole thing in half, the long wise. Well, the long wise is the longer piece. It sounds so much more confusing than it really is. <laughs> What we're doing here is we're, we, are, we are building the body of the chamois and we're cutting out a place that's the armpit. Um, you want to take the diagram off and let me show them with the, with the <laughs> one I've got on my lap? Okay, so I have four pieces here, two sleeves, and two bodies. And I'm going to fold this whole thing in half so that I have the, the outer edges all together. Um, move yourself to the left. Just to, Yeah, there you go. Uh, so so this, is, this is the middle, and this is the outer corner where the armpit is going to be. And I, I normally, I just do this freehand. Um, but the shape you're going to want looks like that. <laughs> um, here. So you have eight layers cut on this little armpit curve. So that's opened up. And so you have two, two of the shorter sleeve, shorter sleeve ones and two of the body ones. And the next trickiest part of this. Um, we have a question. Does it matter what order you stack those pieces in? Not in the slightest, as long as the top edge is on the top. Um, for sewing them together, what I do just for my own sake is I'll take a body piece and then a sleeve piece. And I'll fold the sleeve piece so that both of its sides are on one. And then another body piece and another sleeve piece. Now, the reason that I do this is that the absolute most common mistake that I make in this particular set of constructions is to get the body pieces and the arm pieces twisted. Because the idea is eventually we're going to sew it into one big, get off of there, dog. It's going to get sewn into one big shape. Okay, see the sleeves? I mean, that's, that's the whole shmi almost completed. So, the next trick is to pin these shoulder seams. I suppose, no, they're not really shoulder seams. They're armpit seams. So we're going to leave the sides open and basically sew the sleeves on as part of the bodice construction. I'm going to show them real quick which uh, way the sleeve and bodice seams, seams are supposed to go. Okay. Since you have that wonderful diagram. Sure. So you were saying, I, I just want to make sure that I have this clear too. Right. Uh, that that half moon piece is right here. Uh-huh. 
and right here. Uh huh. And the same goes on here. Uh huh. And that's what gets cut out. Uh huh. Woohoo! And then what and, do these go together. Okay, so remember you've got two of each of these. So you're going to take one of these sleeves and attach it to the bodice on that curved seam that you just cut. Okay. They should be exactly the same. And I'm going to do a French seam there because I, I don't like raw edges. So, so that. So we, it's almost like we flip this piece over on top of, say, the front piece and so yeah, one arm pull together. You could, that, you could start that way. Um, it, it also helps that the fabric that I'm using doesn't have um, two sides. If your fabric has two sides, what you're going to do right now is match the um, two right sides together because we're going to sew a French seam here. So one arm sleeve and one body piece and we're going to sew right sides together. Can we see what you're sewing? Sure. This is, second, let me grab the end of this before it gets away from me. This is one body piece and one sleeve piece. And all of those places that were marked 28 inches, those are all gonna be on the top. So so this, um, so we would sew this together, pin and sew this together. The next one is, this is the other end of that sleeve piece. And it gets sewn to the top edge of the other body piece. And I'll, I will show you one that's already put together here in just a minute so that you can get an idea of how this is supposed to, supposed to lay out. And then, then you take this body piece, which you, it's either the front or the back, it's symmetrical, so it doesn't really matter, and attach it to the other sleeve piece if you can find the other sleeve piece. There it is. And I'll, always matching along this the same curve, which is you can only put it together one way because it's curved in one way. Okay. So this is the second sleeve attached to the first body piece. And then and then this is the second sleeve. And we're gonna take this around and attach it full circle to the first body piece. And I will hold this up and show it to you in just a second. So, and, and like I say, I, I do this right sides together. If you're doing it on a sewing machine, you could just whip it on a serger and you wouldn't have to worry about it. Um, but so the whole thing pinned together at the shoulder seams looks like that. And it looks huge, but that's because it all gathers up and that's, that, that's fine. Um, so yeah, so there's, and like I say, the, the thing that I do wrong most is flip one of the seams so that it's backwards or inside out. But anyway, so there's the first, that's, the, that's actually the whole thing. That's the whole construction, the whole, every piece you need, except for some ribbon or something for the neckline. 
So we're going to go from here to this one that's partially sewed. And you'll notice it's sewed in purple string so that you can actually see it. Um, Trying to make sure I got your sequence properly. I'm running out of room here. <laughs> uh -oh. So well, it looks like this sleeve to back, sleeve to back to sleeve, and then sleeve to front. Yeah, like that. every, every other just... one, every other one. And so this, this piece here is, I'm sewing the last, I'm sewing the, the right sides together of the last seam of that whole sequence. So, and I just, I got it so that I could just get to the end of it here. Um, and yeah. And like I say, you could you could you could do this on a machine much faster, but I, I like to watch late night television. I think most of these got put together while I was binging the second season of Bridgerton, which I love. It doesn't have anything re remotely resembling historical accuracy, and that's part of what I love about it. Yeah. that better? Can everyone see the screen? I hope. Yeah. I have a pair of scissors. Where are my scissors? You'll see my scissors have a problem. They've been uh, modified <laughs> by the dog. Um, okay, so this is, this is one of those seams put together. It's a, it's a, one sleeve attached to one body. And that's just straight sewn with the raw edge. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim this raw edge and then I'm gonna flip it and show you the, uh, the French seam, which is a seam which encloses all your raw edges so that everything is very strong and sturdy. So what I'm doing is I'm trimming this right up next to the seam, leaving about a quarter inch. And again, everything, everything is eyeball it. I don't measure anything, which I don't use patterns either. So anyway, so here's this trimmed off. And what I'm gonna do is because these are right sides together, I'm now gonna flip it so that it's wrong sides together. Can you hold that up to your left a little? Yeah. So I'm, I'm, this is the right sides together and the raw edge. Now I'm flipping it so that the wrong sides are together and, the, and that raw edge is now enclosed in the seam. And I'm going to, I did pre-thread a bunch of needles just which I'm glad I did because it takes a minute. So I'm just gonna take my, my running back stitch and go through my loop and then Run it back. And normally I would take slightly smaller stitches, but I'm in a hurry. So what you get is you get this seam that's all enclosed. And so on the right side of the garment, it looks like a regular seam, albeit a slightly messy one. Um, and on the, the back side of the garment, these ones are done better. Um, it looks just like a tidy little line of stitching with the seam enclosed. And what that does is it, it, and it ties off all your raw edges. And so this one is, that was, th that was the last seam that I just put together. And when I finished that, um, and so you've got, 
if you grab it by the lips, by the top of the sleeves, you see you've got this big, great big round neckline. And can you hold it down a little farther? We can see the neckline. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make this um, casing for the gathering, for the drawstring at the neckline. And I do this before I do the side seams, just because it's easier to hold the garment when you don't have like a huge wad of fabric in your hand. So this, this casing for the neckline is literally just folded over and then double folded. So just like you do the hem of anything, but you're making a you're making a tube all around the top. Um, Can you hold it up into your left a little? Yeah, I think your camera is sitting next to your laptop. That's why. Well, it's it's actually on my um, iPad, and it's it's it is an odd place. Okay. Uh, but anyway, so you see, there's this is just this is just a tube folded over twice, and then stitched along the edge. Um, to make to make a casing for the um, the neckline, and I leave a little gap, just a little gap at the beginning, at the beginning of the um, tube, and I'll end the I'll end the stitching right here, to just to be able to put um, a ribbon in it for the gathering. I might add that the dress I'm wearing is this exact same pattern. I made it out of a tablecloth. Um, so here's the, here's the, the neckline pretty much finished on this one. It seems like such a lot of fabric, but really it isn't. <laughs> and so once you get that neckline all enclosed, um, you've got it to this date which is the neckline is done. Um, if you'll indulge me for just a moment, I can go get a ribbon and show you how to thread the ribbon into that neckline. Um, I use a safety pin. And then this one, the side seams have not been sewn yet. So you see how the sleeves are, the bottom edge of the sleeves are matched together and then the front and the back are matched together. And I generally do this seam as a flat fell seam, um, which I can describe. The uh, before you go on to the seam, you had a question about the ribbon. Um, mm -hmm. does it always have to be in the front or can it be hidden in some way? Um, it's actually tucked on the inside so that the, the bow of the ribbon um, and you can use cording, you can use shoelaces, you can use anything you got that's long and stringy. <laughs> um, I use ribbon because that's what I have. A lot of times I'll, I'll take regular um, ribbon, about three quarter inch, and I'll sew it in half and I'll just run it on my sewing machine. I'll just run it so that it's sewn in half, so it's double width. And it makes it a little stiffer. And just, uh, for, for I mean, like this one, oh. <laughs> So the string on the dress, this is actually a piece of a strip of t-shirt. I upcycle everything. Like I say, the dress is made out of a tablecloth. The string is what we call t-shirt yarn in that you cut like a, a, a three quarter inch or a or inch wide strip of t-shirt. And then when you pull on it, it, it rolls up into like yarn. And it actually works really well for this sort of thing. Um, it's a little stretchy. When I was making masks for the COVID stuff, I was using it for all of the strings for the masks, and it was actually really very comfortable. Um, and let's see, where's my safety pin? There's my safety pin. Basically, if you're going to run a string into one of these, here, I'll use this one. Um, you're just going to attach safety pin to it, Find your gap, which you carefully remember to leave, because if you don't, you have to make a new one. 
Um, aha, there it is. See, there's there's the gap. And you just run your safety pin in there and um, run can you roll to the left just a little. Yeah. <laughs> run your string around. And sometimes you have to wiggle it a little bit to uh, get past the seams, but and and that's that's just how your neckline is going to be gathered up. You know, so that it's going to just like that. Okay, and then sewing up the side seams. Um, because the fabric that I use has already got the edges turned, if your fabric has raw edges, you're going to have to turn the hems, um, which is just handkerchief hems. You can either roll hem them or just, just regular hem them. But anyway, so side seams. Let's see, what is the best way to describe this? Um, the, again, the idea is to enclose the raw edges of the seam. And this is a flat felt seam, which is, um, if you look at a pair of blue jeans, the seams on a pair of blue jeans are flat felt. And it's a, it's a great way to make a very sturdy, very stiff seam. So. Now you got me looking at my blue jeans. Well, and if, if they're actual blue jeans, like Levi's or something, I can almost guarantee that the seams are going to be flat felt. Um, otherwise, they're going to be probably put together with a serger. And I love my serger, but it's a pain in the butt. Okay, threading a needle again. See how easy that is? <laughs> okay, so the way I've got the the seam together, it's not quite even. One side is a slightly longer than the other. And the reason for this is it will become become apparent in in a moment here. So you're you're gonna want to sew this, and you can do this, you can do this on a sewing machine too. Um, like I say, I, I do it by hand because. I don't know, because I can. Actually, I started just sewing the two pieces together right now. Yeah, I'm just sewing the two pieces together, not quite even. Not quite even. So, and I'm not going to go very far with this because I can show you the, the trick to it. So, when you get them sewed together, slightly uneven like this, you're going to open the seam, and sometimes it helps to iron it when you do this. You're going to open the seam out flat, but you're not, you know how normally when you would sew something, you would, you would open the seam like this, so that you had the part on one side and part on the other side. You're gonna take both of these over to the longer side so that the long side can be turned over so the whole thing is enclosed. And then when you get, when you sew it, it'll be flat. I think I can just go back the other way here. So much easier to show people in person. And I don't, I don't use any fancy stitches or anything. You could, you could overcast the seam instead of just flat sewing it. But I don't. The this fabric is so thin, you don't really need to do that. If you've got a really wide or fat fabric, um, you might need to do it with an overhand. So your seam ends up looking like that, sewn flat. And that's a very, very strong way to sew. The, the fabric of your garment will give out before your seams do. Um, it's also a good way to use 
a thread that isn't necessarily as strong or as tough as what you would want for a single sewing. Anyway, so when you get those side seams sewn up, you've basically got a finished garment. That's all there is to it. Side seams sewn up, gathering in it, and the, the you can see an example of this in the, I put in the thread, the beginning thread, um, or the, the event for the thing, there's, there's, I put in a, I put in an example, or you can see the one that I'm wearing, because it's super comfortable, super easy. I started making them by hand because I was out uh, taking care of my mother in California, and I didn't think to take my sewing with me, and I didn't have a sewing machine. And so I just started, I, I went to a thrift store and I got a couple of sheets and I just started making dresses, making chemise. And it, I thought, oh no, it's going to take me months, you know. Turns out it doesn't. It, it really moves kind of fast. So is there any questions? I mean, that's. Yeah, you guys can unmute your mics and ask whatever questions you like at this point. Yeah. Um, please note that I put two. Um, files in the chat for you. One is the basic chemise pattern that Nellie so kindly gave to us to give to you. Um, and the uh, smaller uh, file, which is the armholes that she had illustrated out for you. So yes, any questions you guys have, here's your chance. Also, I find the, I find the hand sewing to be kind of a meditative process you know do you just start cruising along and it just goes right along and I, I like I say I, I always admire the people that are doing the corsets and everything by hand it's like whoa can't imagine doing all those casings by hand but oh I can't either <laughs> well it doesn't look like we have any questions um but right. if you guys think of other questions after this you feel free to put them on the event you can message Nelly. Um, I have also put um, in the chat just now some uh, chemise patterns. Like if you are interested in actually having a chemise pattern, like if I'm one of those people, I've got to have a pattern. I can <laughs> cut it and, and do it freehand like Nelly does, but oh my God, I hands down to you, Nelly, I couldn't do that. <laughs> I need to have the pattern right now for me. So if you need that, I put some um, in a spreadsheet, not a spreadsheet, but in a yeah. document for you. That you yeah, my, my grandmother at. taught me to drape. She was the kind of person that would, if she had a party to go to, she would sit down that morning and take either take something that she already had or and recut it totally reshape it, recut it, make it into a different dress, or she'd take two things and put them together, or she'd drape something totally new. She just, she worked in theater for long enough that she, she was just really fast at it. So, you know, I, I very seldom use patterns anymore. Um, only if I want something really specific, like I'll, I'll, like some of the Regency patterns have shapes in them that I don't that I'm not real familiar with like the the way the armholes go really far back and stuff like that but usually I can just look at a picture and figure out how they made it <laughs> okay awesome yeah that's that's a good skill I mean I'm too too slow with that way too slow we do have some questions um, the patterns I've attached, which is the closest to the one you just saw made. Um, any of the ones that say easy or easy and cute? Um, <laughs> those, <laughs> I mean, that, that's my, you know, like professional description. Um, right. Those are the ones that are closest to what she just did. Um, the one that says cap sleeve is the one that's like exactly what she did but you put elastic at the bottom of the sleeve so that you can judge it right up here. Um, yeah, the, um, the, the huge advantage to the sleeve and bodies being put together the way that I put them together is that fit becomes absolutely irrelevant because you just pull the neckline to however you want it. Um, you move the gathers around so the armpit holes are bigger or smaller depending on what you need. 
um, any, any of the things like that. It's just, it is so comfortable and adjustable. I've made like 10 of these in preparation for a theater show for 10 people whose sizes I don't actually know. Um, wow. But I know so it'll be a multitude of people then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, good. Um, I, and I've even, I just made one of these for one of my larger clients that it's the same pattern. I just made it, it was like 60 inches wide. And it's, you know, blousey and comfortable on her. Um, she's got a 54-inch bust. There you go. Wow, that's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. um, Deanna, you said you couldn't open the file that I put in the chat. Um, you might be able to make a copy of the Google Doc right there. Hopefully, it'll let you make a copy. Um, Shira says, which one would work best for Tudor or Elizabethan? Definitely the one that Nellie showed you just now will work for Tudor and Elizabethan. They work yep. perfectly for that. Yep. They'll work for anything all the way up to the 20th century, to be honest. Um, of the patterns, uh, just my personal favorite is the one that's about 50 the bottom. It's 3809 or 8715. It's got some really blousey sleeves if you want the long sleeve kind that you can pull through. Mm -hmm. like if you want one of those, it's, it's really good for that. But also, if you want to put sections up your arm or through them, um, it has that built into the pattern if you're, if you're one who needs a pattern. If you don't, um, Nelly Chemise, um, Nelly, I think you can do that with yours too, right? Oh, make yeah. little channels to... Oh, yeah. You could totally put channels in it to, to make it poofy. And if you wanted it, you know, if you wanted a sleeve that was really, really had lots of poofs in it, you just make it longer to start with. And then I would put um, drawstring ribbons because I hate elastic. Um, just it, it's uncomfortable. And it when when you work in theater, elastic fails. It just, you know, you can't trust it. <laughs> I work with you've got to rip those costumes off quickly. Sometimes the elastic snaps. Yeah, and you know it's just it's just easier. I, I work with dancers a lot, and so much of what they do, if you're going to wave your arms around a lot, you don't want elastic on them. Uh, you have a question. What do you do with the wrist? Um, either make another casing, just like you did on the neckline, and put a ribbon in it, or I just um, most of the ones I do are just open. They're just open at the wrist, which means that if you put an oversleeve on that, you'll get a ruffle around the bottom edge where, where the sleeve just comes out from across the bottom. Um, you can put a cuff on them if you want to. I don't usually bother. Yeah, I mean, I could also do a tutorial for a man's shirt that was that's made very similarly. Um, but, you know, with a collar and handmade eyelet holes. <laughs> oh, did you just say handmade eyelid holes? I did. Not for me. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> well, you know, you have to realize that, that metal eyelids were invented in 1640. So. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You have another question here. How big is the cutout? I think, Patty, you mean the cutout for the arm hole? That yeah. Yeah. Um, it's usually about six inches down and three inches wide. Um, that's approximate. Um, you can, if you have really big arms, you might want to make it a little bigger. If you have little small arms, you might want to make it a little smaller. Um, each, it, it's again, totally adjustable as far as, you know, if you've got enough sleeve, when you gather it up, you can either put more or less gather in there to make the armhole bigger. I don't know if that made sense, but but again, as long as they're all eight the same, it doesn't really matter how big they are. Any other questions? And like I said, this will be recorded, so you can hear this all over again. Just uh, watch out for it on YouTube in the next day or so. Um, Nellie, I want to thank you. Oh, you're welcome. 
Thank you so much. Yeah, it was very informative. And actually, it gave me a few tips on what I'm going to do. <laughs> yeah, well, just, just remember, whatever you're wearing, there's a chamois under it. You can, wear the, you can wear the same outfit for an entire week of fair as long as you've got clean chimneys to go underneath. You won't even be stinky. <laughs> All well, right. The other, the, oh. the, other tip, the other tip that I have, and this is only sort of shimmy related. When you get out of your costume at the end of the day and it's a little bit sweaty, spray it off with a mixture of alcohol and water with a, in a spray bottle, in a mist or bottle. Spray it off with alcohol. It's what we do in the theater. And what that does is it kills the bacteria so that your costume doesn't get accumulatively stinky. So spray bottle, dilute vodka. I mean, you can get the super cheap, nasty vodka, works fine. Or you can use um, isopropyl alcohol that you get at the drugstore um, that you want to dilute a little bit. Perfect, perfect. Just Thank thought you. I'd pass that on. Yeah, that's actually a really good one. <laughs> oh, Patty said, sorry, the vodka's for drinking while sewing. <laughs> Ew, not that vodka. That's for good vodka. <laughs> vodka, rum, tequila, <laughs> wine, you name it. Well, thank you. I don't, I don't think I'd want to spray off my costume with tequila. That would be nice to good tequila. <laughs> All right, you guys have a wonderful day. Um, if you have any questions, please shoot any of us a um, PM. Have a good day. Yeah, I'll keep an eye on the uh, on the YouTube just in case you have any questions. <laughs>